Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about indie publishing versus traditional publishing. Now, disclaimer before we start the video, I still have not published anything. Either way, I haven't published anything traditionally. I haven't published anything through self-publishing or indie publishing. I wanted to talk about this because I know that I have a big audience of people who are writing their first books, who are looking into getting published just like I am, and we're kind of all on this journey together. So as I go through the motions of researching, learning about uh, the benefits of self-publishing versus traditional publishing, uh, the pros and cons between either. As I go through this process and kind of collect that information for myself and try and get a better understanding of it, I also want to be sharing that with you, which is why I'm making this video when I really don't have experience in either of them. But I have done research and I will continue to do more research and we're going to get through this together, which is why I'm making this video because I do want to talk about what I've learned so far and how that has affected what my goals are with my books that I have going on right now. So let's start it off by saying that since I started sharing my writing on YouTube, I have also expressed that my goal is to traditionally publish. I am going to be querying this summer, at least that's the plan. Up until basically a few weeks ago, I have had the full intention of traditionally publishing. Now let me tell you what changed. <laughs> Honestly, it started off with me just learning a little bit more about what goes into traditional publishing versus self-publishing and learning about the different kind of aspects of each and then comparing the two. Also, at the end of my professional certificate course with UBC here in Vancouver, we started to learn about indie publishing versus traditional publishing, which I thought was wonderful that they covered that in such depth. They really went to talk about, you know, the benefits of traditional publishing and the benefits of indie publishing and they had a whole interview with an indie author that was so valuable. I'll also share who that author is in case anyone knows her. Her name is Deborah Wilde and she wrote the Unlikable Demon Hunter series. <laughs> so she is a self-published author from Vancouver so they had a really good in-depth interview with her about her process and kind of giving advice to anyone who wants to self-publish. Finishing up that course and learning about both sides as well as kind of just doing more research myself. Obviously a lot of the authors that I subscribe to on AuthorTube are going for self-publishing. Same goes for book talk. There are quite a few book talkers that I follow that are publishing and they are self-publishing. And the more I learn about it, the more torn I am between what I want to do. I'm gonna talk about a few different aspects of publishing in general, and I'll talk about kind of how these aspects differ depending on if it's self-publishing versus traditional publishing. And I will also share my opinion on how I feel about those things because it's my channel. Therefore, my opinion. This isn't necessarily advice to you because I don't know what I'm doing still. So over the course of this video, I'm gonna talk about control when it comes to publishing, uh, money from traditional versus self-publishing, ability, so what you can kind of do yourself and what you need other people to do, and then distribution, basically. So how your book is getting out there, um, kind of marketing, I guess. So we're gonna cover all of those areas because that seems to be the main factors when it comes to deciding how you wanna publish a book. So let's start off by talking about the control that you get when you're traditionally publishing versus when you're self-publishing. This kind of aspect is actually not a deterrent for me to self-publish. I know that for a lot of authors, they are self-described as control freaks, which makes total sense. You know, like that's your baby. You put hundreds and hundreds of hours into bringing that story to life and you want as much control over it as you can possibly have. So in that case, indie publishing might be better for you because when you work with a traditional publisher, they get to decide Pretty much, you basically give them the, the story uh, in whatever rough version you have, and then they pretty much decide everything else from there on out, when you have a literary agent and then a traditional publisher. So once that story is handed off, you obviously are gonna get edits from your editor, which is fantastic. Generally, from what I've heard, there don't seem to be many qualms with the editors exactly. Um, usually the editor is trying to match your vision for the story and make it the best version of that story that it can possibly be. Although I can understand how they might want to change things that you don't necessarily want to change. So already there, there is some loss of control because there are going to be edits um, that you maybe didn't think of, that you maybe don't want, and you can always discuss that with your editor, of course. But at the end of the day, 
in traditional publishing, you're expected to trust that the editor knows exactly what they're doing and that they also know how to make the story the best it cannot possibly be while also being as sellable as possible because you are trusting them. So this is already a loss of control. And then beyond that, you don't really get control over your cover design unless you're very lucky. You don't get as much control over how it's distributed and how it's marketed. You can start off by saying it's a YA urban fantasy with these themes in it, but ultimately that comes down to the person who's actually distributing it and who's actually marketing it, which half of that is going to be you, but the major decisions are probably going to be made by the publishing house because again, you're trusting that they know what they're doing to market your book and make it as sellable as possible. So that's the thing, if you go traditional publishing, you give up control over a lot of those aspects. Whereas if you go indie publishing, you are in control of all of that. So you get to choose your cover designer. You can make as many edits to the cover as you possibly want. You can get an editor and you should get an editor. You have more control over what pieces of the editor's advice you choose to take into account and you have more control over what you do with that. You have more control over how to format it, you have more control over how to market it, you have control over how you're going to distribute the book. You also have control over how fast you're going to publish your book. So if you're traditionally publishing, you probably have a timeline that has been given to you and that's just how it's going to be, that is kind of what you have to follow because there are all these other steps that you have to go through. And generally that's the timeline you're stuck with and also traditional publishing can take years longer than indie publishing can. So again, with indie publishing, you have control over how often you release a book. If you wanna release three books a year, you can do that. The indie author that we were talking about, Deborah Wild, was talking about how she had a friend who released a brand new romance book every like 12 weeks, which is insane. That's a new book every three months, but she was just publishing them herself and that's what her readers wanted. And she was able to meet that want because she was publishing herself and she didn't have to worry about marketing timelines or publishing timelines. So that's what I've gathered on control so far. Uh, but I will say that, as I mentioned, that isn't really a con for me to lose that sort of control because I don't really consider myself a control freak. I think the only thing I would have to be careful with is being super picky with the literary agent because I know that I have some themes and some stories that I really need them to stay that way. So I think in that case, it's just making sure that I find a literary agent that I know actually believes in my stories and being picky and not moving forward until I find a literary agent who is actually aligned with my goals for my book. But the thing is that, you know, once I find that, I am totally okay with pretty much handing the reins over to them for most of the rest of the process. So branching off of control also kind of leads to how much money you make depending on how you choose to publish. So generally what I've found when you have a literary agent, you are going to pay them 10 to 20% of the sales of your book. So 10 to 20% of the success that you receive basically. Not upfront, let's make that clear, you don't pay a literary agent upfront. This is something that I learned that also reminded me closely of acting because it was like the golden rule was to not pay an agent up front. Um, and I did not know, I learned the hard way with that rule. So in this world of um, entertainment agents, I already know that I'm not paying an agent up front. So your agent gets paid after you start making sales, after you start getting some sort of income from your work. And that cut is about 10 to 20%. Then there's also going to be a cut depending on what your publisher wants. So there's going to be another percentage that goes to your publisher for marketing costs and distribution costs and, you know, cover design costs, editor costs, all of these things are taken out of the money that you make when you start selling the book. And from what I've learned, it's tough because it varies between agents and publishing houses on the traditional side, and then it also varies between self-published authors on the indie publishing side. On, honestly, all I've been able to glean from this research is that when it comes to traditional publishing, you are paying less upfront, but more when it comes to royalties and actual sales. And then when it comes to indie publishing, you are paying more upfront because you have to cover those costs yourself, but then you get a higher cut from your sales because now almost all of that money is going directly to you. So 
that's the kind of balance for money and that will vary because if you're not able to properly market your book as a self-published author then you're not going to make that many sales and you might never make your money back whereas with traditional publishing you might make your money back very quickly and vice versa so again this factor is it's obviously going to play a role in deciding what kind of publishing you want to do but again for me it doesn't really the only thing that I can think that this would affect is that I don't have a lot of money like saved up or anything you know what I mean so indie publishing might be tougher that way because I wouldn't have as much money saved up up front to be able to actually pay for those costs. But that segues into our next sort of argument when it comes to indie versus traditional publishing and that is ability or the number of hats that you are able and willing to wear. So again, let's look at traditional publishing first, because when it comes to traditional publishing, you're not wearing as many hats. You are the author, you are probably doing some marketing, because these days you should have a social platform and you should do marketing for your book yourself via your social media and your website and that sort of thing. So you still have to do a bit of that, but for the most part, the literary agent and the publisher wears most of the hats. They are finding your editor, they're doing cover design, they're covering all of those costs because they get their cut once the book starts selling. You of course are going to have a little bit of input, more if you're lucky, but for the most part they're covering everything. So you only really wear the hat of author and the hat of promoting your work as an author. And even then, they also are going to have their own marketing campaigns running. So you won't have to worry about the major, major campaigns. So when it comes to indie publishing, you have to wear all of the hats, unless you can afford to outsource some of the hats. This is apparently, this is the metaphor that I am taking to the grave with me for this video. So when it comes to publishing a book, there are a lot of things that go into that process. You have to edit multiple different types of editing. You have to do developmental edits, you have to do copy edits. These are all different stages of edits that you have to go through and if you don't as an indie author it's very obvious and release, releasing a book like that I think is also kind of what gives indie publishing such a negative connotation sometimes. We're moving away from that thankfully but I think that it received that sort of negative view because people were publishing books without going through the necessary steps of making sure that they were of publishing quality. So all of the steps that go into indie publishing aren't steps that you want to just cut corners on or skip entirely. That's like a huge no-no and a great way for your book to not be as good a quality as it can be. When it comes to indie publishing, you have to do multiple rounds and multiple types of edits, which you have to pay for. You can use friends and people who read when you start off, but eventually you're going to want to hire a professional editor who has experience, who knows what they're doing and can make sure that they are giving you valuable edits. You have to do cover design. As nice as the phrase don't judge a book by its cover is, uh, a lot of people judge books by their covers. If your cover is not accurate to what is in the book, then it's kind of misleading. There are certain types of covers that are going to sell well and are going to market well, and there are certain types of covers that are not, especially depending on the genre. So you have to do research not only into just the elements that you want on your cover but also the marketing side of your cover so what's going to sell well in your market for your genre for your specific audience and that's that's a lot of work so you have to cover edits cover design marketing all of the marketing you have to handle unless you hire someone to do marketing you also have to format your book formatting a book is also a huge part of making sure it's good quality and then there's also uh, creating designing and hosting as well as maintaining a website which is another cost <laughs> so you can see how all of these things are pretty much covered when you're doing traditional publishing which is also probably why you're paying more because you're paying more people to do those things and to hopefully do them right you are are paying to trust that they are doing those things correctly and to the best of their ability. When you're indie publishing, you either have to take on all of those parts of the publishing process or you can outsource, which then is another upfront cost and you have to make sure that you are not wasting money by choosing people who aren't actually going to do the best. And you have to make sure that you do research into who you're choosing. So you can see how that is a lot of work and I commend indie authors for doing that because it's an insane amount of work. And I would also like to say that this 
kind of aspect of publishing, which I'm calling ability or wearing the hats, <laughs> is actually an argument that has made me sway more towards self-publishing only because when I started to go through all of those things, I also started to realize that I already have a lot of these skills, which means that even though I don't have a lot of money most of the time and I'm paying off student loans and all that kind of stuff, I wouldn't necessarily have to fork over that many costs up front because a lot of these are abilities that I already have because I have a tendency in jobs and in learning to wear a lot of hats and that's just something I enjoy doing. So that's why this actually became less of a barrier because I have all of the software that I need to format a book and to create a cover and I also have enough artistic talent to create a cover and that's something that I've done in the past. I also literally work in marketing so at least I understand that side of it a little bit and I personally can create a website from scratch if I need to. I'm not going to because I don't feel like coding entire websites these days <laughs> but the fact of that is that I can create a pretty nice looking website especially with a website builder and save a lot of costs that way. So really the only thing that I really really need to put costs upfront towards is anything I have to buy like ISBNs or paying editors which is something that I would really really need to pay for upfront because I can't edit this myself. Absolutely not. <laughs> so this kind of aspect of publishing has actually pushed me a little bit more towards the self-publishing side because I can do so many of these things myself and I have so much experience in all of these different things which is wildly lucky. I really lucked out with that. But again, I don't know if I necessarily want to do those things. I would prefer to mostly just be the author and the creator and also do marketing because I can do that. I have a platform that is something that I can obviously help with a lot when it comes to whatever kind of publishing I choose to do. And that leads us to the one part of publishing that I and most indie authors don't have the ability to do. I think that we're moving towards a position where there are better resources and kind of better networks for indie publishers, which is incredible. But when it comes down to it, traditional publishers still have a leg up when it comes to distribution. If I want to physically see my book in like an Indigo, which is the bookstore in Canada. I don't know if they have them in the States. I don't think they do. I think it's only Barnes and Nobles in the States. But if I want to physically see my book in Indigo, Indigo only takes books from distributors, from specific publishing houses and publishing companies. So if I ever want my physical book to be available in that sort of network, I have to go through traditional publishing. This is an ability that I do not have. I do not have a network with dis distributors. I also know that the type of fiction that I'm writing, which is generally YA fantasy, maybe adult fantasy, sci-fi fantasy, those genres tend to have a more commercial market or a more commercial audience, which means that traditional publishing is probably going to be better and I'm going to have more of a network and better distribution through a traditional publisher with the genre that I write in. Of course there are going to be exceptions either way, but for example romance, paranormal romance, urban romance, fantasy romance, those genres do really well if you're self-publishing. So there's genres like that that are going to do really really well self-publishing, whereas if I was publishing a YA fantasy, it might actually do better traditionally published. I'm also going to say this kind of, as far as distribution goes and market trends, this is something that I am just learning about now. It's something that I am currently exploring, so there may be some inconsistencies between what I'm saying and what I learn in the future. But you live and you learn, and right now it kind of just seems that that network of distributors is what is going to be the best asset for selling my book, if that makes sense. So all in all, indie publishing, you have so much more control. You call the shots, you make the decisions, it's your baby, and you market, sell, edit, create it as such. You get to do whatever you want with it, which has its own downfalls. It's, it's hard work, it's a lot of work. You have to wear a lot of hats, or you have to have the money up front to outsource people who are going to be able to take over the hats that you cannot wear, the hats that do not fit your head. And then when it comes to traditional publishing, you're not going to have nearly 
nearly as much control and you are also going to pay more money from your book sales so directly from your book sales to your literary agent your editors your publishing house when the book actually starts to sell and you're probably going to pay more to them there are pros and cons for both and i am torn which is also why i have expressed interest in becoming a hybrid publisher i am not opposed to that I just have to be careful how I go about doing that if I do decide to. And as a conclusion, I think that I'm still leaning towards traditionally publishing. I think I'm still in the boat where I am going to try and traditionally publish at first. I also know and am not taking for granted the fact that I have a large platform and that is something that can help you find literary agents because it shows marketability and it shows that you already have an audience that you can market to. I think that the skills that I have that would help me in indie publishing may potentially be assets to a traditional publisher and ways that I can make myself more appealing to literary agents and traditional publishers on that side. So like I mentioned, being able to market myself, that is something that I, I can do. I work in marketing and I have large platforms already, which is so lucky. I can create my own website, all of that. Th those are all aspects that I can already handle, so I just need to focus on making sure that I have an excellent book for a traditional publisher. So that's why I'm still leaning towards traditionally publishing and seeing where I can go with that. And I think even I'm sitting here comparing everything at a very minuscule level, but when it comes down to it, I don't really want to do all of those extra things. I am already a freelancer, I already am an independent contractor for all of the other work that I do and I don't want to do that when it comes to my writing. I want to be the creative and not the manager and the designer and the marketer. I just want to create my stories, make them as good as they possibly can and then trust other people to get them into the market where they belong and to help me spread those stories and make them as good as possible. I also just really want to see my book in an indigo, which I know is so, so minor, but like, <laughs> I just think that would be super cool. So that is where I sit. Very comfortable over here on my fence between the two. <laughs> might just tightrope along the fence for a while and see if that if I change my mind as I continue learning and I will of course continue sharing with you as I do continue learning if you heard anything in this video that sounds wrong or you're curious about or you want to start a conversation about because again like I mentioned I am no expert I have no experience in either type of publishing I have just done research basically if anything sounds incorrect and you want to let me know please let me know in the comments and I'll pin the comment and make sure that any corrections are listed for anyone else who might watch the video as a resource if you want to start conversation in the comments please do because we are all learning and we are all trying to do our very best and figure out what is the best way to get our art out in the world which is a really tough thing because it's art and it's hard to sell it. <laughs> so start conversations, let me know if you have any questions, and thank you all so much for watching the video. As always, thank you to all of my patrons for supporting me. You are the best. I love you all very much, and thank you all for watching me over here on YouTube and liking my videos and commenting and starting the wonderful conversations that you do. Don't forget to smile, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.